Hi everyone, uh, this week's video is going to focus on notice periods, a number of questions um, around the giving of notice, retraction uh, for both employees and employers. The first question is, can an employee retract notice once it's been given? Uh, the basic rule is that um, once either party serves notice, it's not capable of unilateral retraction. So one party can't simply say, uh, I don't want to give notice anymore, I want to carry on. That would generally need to be with the agreement of the employer. Now, through case law, there have been some examples of where uh, employers uh, are under more of a duty to accept a retraction. And this tends to focus around resignations in the heat of the moment. So uh, an employee who, for whatever reason, gives um, their notice uh, under pressure, perhaps, or um, following some sort of um, incident, um, then thinks about it, comes back to the employer and says, um, I think I was a bit hasty, I'd like to retract that notice. And in some circumstances, tribunals have accepted that employees in, in those circumstances should be permitted um, to retract that notice. The best examples are where there's been a blow up in the office, a big argument with the employer. 24 hours later, tempers have cooled um, and following a resignation, the employee says, can I come back? The risk of not accepting that um, request is that it could be deemed to be a dismissal on the part of the employer, which um, could, of course, be unfair. The longer the passage of time between the um, uh, resignation and the retraction, the safer it is for an employer to reject that request. Um, but we do need to consider all the circumstances if somebody does um, try to retract that resignation. Um, there may also be some sort of um, condition, behavioural issue, which might have affected the employee's judgment. And again, that, that needs to be taken into account. Conversely, can the employer uh, retract uh, notice once it's been given. One good example recently has been the mandatory vaccination requirement um, which was going to apply to all CQC registered um, care settings. A number of employers did um, terminate employment or place employees on notice of termination. Uh, once the regulations were revoked, us, us as employers now have um, uh, a problem because the employees can actually continue in that role. Uh, again, no unilateral right to withdraw that notice, but it is something that the employee uh, can agree to. Um, if they didn't um, and left the organisation and perhaps brought an unfair dismissal claim, that could impact on uh, any any earnings that or loss of earnings that they might be claiming because the employer would say, hang on a minute, we provided them with a, a perfectly good um, alternative, which was for them to have their job back and the employee has failed to mitigate their loss. In the context of a redundancy dismissal, it, it should be a little bit easier to demand that uh, the employee continues working. So whilst there again is no unilateral right to withdraw that notice, uh, there is an ongoing duty to search for alternative employment. And if the uh, offer made to the employee before they leave uh, is that they can continue in their existing role, assuming that is a suitable alternative, which it should be if it's the same job, um, an employee who unreasonably refuses that offer um, could uh, forfeit their redundancy entitlement as a result. Um, the final question is around giving longer notice than required because this does happen sometimes. An employee might be on a month's notice if they wish to resign. Uh, they prepare a letter which says I'm leaving but I'm giving you three months notice and in the circumstances the business wants them out sooner. Um, there's, a, there's limited options really um, in many cases because the risk of bringing forward the termination date in those circumstances is that it converts the resignation to a dismissal. Um, so if, for example, we have an employee with 20 years of service who only has to give a month's notice, um, they give three months notice and we say actually you can go after a month, we've technically dismissed that employee. The termination date is brought forward and the employee could bring an unfair dismissal claim. Now, whilst the loss of earnings would arguably be limited to the two months that they would have worked um, beyond their contractual notice period, they might also claim a basic award um, in an unfair dismissal claim, which is calculated um, on the same basis as a redundancy payment. So in those circumstances, the employer has unfortunately opened themselves up to what in that example would be quite a significant liability that is, is difficult to avoid. Um, if an employee has less than two years of service and gives... Um, uh, for example, three months notice under the contract where an employer only has to give one week, it's probably going to be low risk to serve a counter notice of dismissal because at that stage the employee won't have unfair dismissal rights and won't have any uh, right to a basic award. 
So hopefully those um, uh, answers have given you an insight into the, the tricky world of, um, of notice periods. If you do need any further advice, please do visit the website chadricklawrence.co.uk for further resources or email employmenthub at chadlaw.co.uk. Thank you.